Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and today we're going to talk about a recessive breeding project. It's time to update clutch number 10. I just ate dinner is why I'm doing that. Uh, time to update clutch number 10, which is pides. So what you're going to see in this video is pides, and lots of pides. A lot of pides. So I hope, I hope you like pides, but let's be honest. Who doesn't like pides? It's like that iconic gene, right? Pides and bells to me are the iconic, iconic gene that has started all of this. Every pied is unique, so it's worth watching. We're going to start with 181001. It's a little male pied. You know, the odds were bad on this clutch. It was a pied to pied braiding, so we knew we'd have all pieds, right? But we only got one female, and the rest were male, which is okay. It's okay. We'd done all really well on females, so catching up on that a little bit was to be expected. Uh, let's take a look at this. And the thing about pieds is since they're all unique, the patterns are all different. The amount of whites all different. No two are really the same. They're like little snowflakes. These are like reptile snowflakes. And I like this pied. A lot of pattern, a lot of color, but it does have a full white ring and a full white ring and then some white come up the side. So not a very high white pied. But again, we've been picking ours and breeding not for the amount of white, but for this orange color. And you can really see in the sides. It'll quit me a little wiggle worm. There you go. All that orange color nicely displayed all through here. That's what I'm really looking for. So this is a really good example of the color we're looking for in a pied. Put that one back in there. Oh, I know I touched your nose. I'm so sorry. We'll go to 181002, which is this one right here. Now this one is definitely one of my favorites that we have. I'm going to set down the black background just so you can see it. Uh, and here's why. You know me. I like my pied so they got orange color. So I want to do more orange. So starting with that good base is going to help to bring that out in my projects. I go to do things like pumpkin pied, orange dream pied, those sort of things. That orangish base will be easier to enhance and make the best example of the combo I want. I also really like my pieds. I don't really want them low white or high white. I like them banded. So you look here, you get a full band of white, a full band of white, almost a full band there. Good marks up the sides, almost a full band, almost a full band, full band, full band. So you have one, two, three, four full bands of white and several that are very, very near to it. So you really have that banded appearance in this pied. And for me, that banded appearance is really where it's at. But everybody has their preferences. I know some guys that want a really high white pied. I know some guys want a really low white pied. I know some that, you know, care more about the color. Some that care more about, you know, at banding, which is kind of the boat I'm in. Uh, you know, but we've been mostly picking for color. That's why you'll see all of these are going to display that really nice orange, especially in the sides. Really, really good color on all of these pieds here. This one is a very low white pied. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even have a single full ring. It gets close in several places, but you can see, got a fly crawl on him. Shoe fly, don't bother my pied. Uh, as you can see, we don't have a full ring of white. So if you're looking for a really high white pied, probably not going to be your answer. But something I did notice, this is really cool, it's almost got striations. What I mean is look through here. It's like a different color here and here. There's a full striation mark. Same with here. Same with here where the white does come up a little bit. You get those marks. almost makes it look like a segment. How cool is that, right? So anyway, pretty neat. I kind of like this one. This one's really cool. We'll put it back up. Takes us to number four. Now, this is drop all that litter a really nice example and you'll see what i mean when i set it up here again it's really showing the color the oranges and the brights in the side such a cool looking animal on that almost flames just an awesome awesome example of a pied now let's see if we can get it to come out of its ball a little bit you can see on the top half not a whole lot of white going on some close ones then on the back, you start getting the band, band, almost a band, band. I'd call that a full band. It does white scale through there barely. Uh, right on the edge either way. So you're starting to get that really cool banded look. And look how bright these almost saddle markings are. Just a gorgeous, a gorgeous example of what you're looking for, what I'm looking for in a pied. Beautiful, beautiful animal. It's a beautiful animal. We go from that one to this one, which is even lower white than the other one I showed you. This is the lowest white pied I've ever produced. 
for so for those of you that say, hey, I don't want a lot of white on my pies. I really want that wonky, excuse me, pattern and color. This is a snake for you. And as you can see, we don't make any full bands. We get some white there, some there. You get a lot on the sides coming up and through in good color, but it is definitely a low, low white pie. But really wonky pattern, really cool. A little bit of that segmenting going on, just all together. Kind of a neat animal. And these things are growing really well. So, anyway, cool, cool, cool find. We'll put it back. Eighteen ten oh six. Is right there. And again, not a really heavily white pied. But you have a good, solid, thick ring there. Some near, some near rings here, here, here. And some good white in the sides. But again, you get that good color. A good, good orange. So if you're wanting to do projects where you're going to brighten your pied or bring more orange into it, these are the pieds you want. You know, and they've been lined, they've been picked. Their parents were hand-picked for that specific purpose. So just all together, a little coconut on you there. Really cool pieds. And we have one more, and that one was 1810.07. And numbered as the last one, it was the only female. And it is a pretty pied as well. And because we're trying to kind of, you know, up our pied game in the next few years, we held this one back. But you can see full ring, full ring, full ring, full ring. So one, two, three, four, they're all in the back half, nothing in the front half. See that really cool color and pattern up through here. Then you get to where you have those marks. And you are going to bite the shit out of me. You can always tell when they want to bite when they're tense. You can see how tense that snake is. That's a sign that we're getting kind of defensive. We can just kind of cover that up like we always do. Kind of shut that behavior right down. Good snake. Uh, and you can really see the colors there. So anyway, that is all of our pied babies. And I want to show you some. We'll leave this one here while we do it. And uh, we did hold one back last year. One of my best eating snake I've ever held back. But it is a female pied. And to show you, they do a good job of holding on to a lot of that baby color. So this is one from last year we held back. Let me put that one up too. Oh, I know it touched you. And you can really see that the colors in it are pretty consistent still, especially when you get in this back and you're looking for those orange colors. I know, I'm not gonna restrict your movement. They're still all there. So, I mean, that's the line that we're working with uh, and how our animals do. Of course, we have to outcross, but these parents that make these are not related to each other, so we're really good right now without any concern. And you can see, of course, the white brightens as it ages, but that color has tended to stay. You still have the bright oranges and yellows. And this was from the exact same pairing as this one. This is just uh, last year's. I wish this one would have grown a little more than it did, but hey, uh, can't win them all. I do know one of the ones I sold last year, I guess, is a monster already, so... You win some, you lose some. Kurt, any questions about these? Yeah, you said that you were going to want to put um, maybe like yellow belly and right. stream. Would yeah. You, anything else you're maybe looking at? Oh, definitely. You guys uh, know we picked up a Suma. And as soon as that's out of all of its pro not problems, but you know, out of this not having to disinfect all the time, and we'll have that on camera a lot more. It's already eaten for us. It's doing great. We'll definitely want to run Suma into our pines. I know a lot of people want us to push Xanthic into our pieds. We may do that. But in order to do those things, what do you need? Multiple pieds. So with those two holdbacks ready to go, that'll give us three pied females to work with. That'll probably be it for the base pieds we work with. When we do hit the yellow belly pieds and things like that. I will, excuse me, probably hold back at least one female from that when that time comes. Uh, let's start working that way. We are going to hold back a het pied this year. That'll probably be a yellow belly fire female. I don't know. I don't get to pick it. So, you know, what I mean by that is question girl gets to pick that. <laughs> You'll see that in a future clutch update. So we will probably be doing that as well to kind of get that system going. But definitely putting the Suma into it. And I think, you know, with everything that's been out on the Super Black Pastel, and well, we're gonna, we are going to try it uh, with the banana, you know, a lot of people had a lot of issues with, with kinking on those. 
and we're going to give it a shot. We're going to take our shot. We're going to test our theories on what we think may help with it. But if it doesn't, you know, and we'll see. I mean, I'm not 100 percent I'm not like super confident it's going to because a lot of people have tried and failed. But we're going to take our shot because we're so far into that project. I want to try it at least once. Uh, but the Suma is a much more stable, very, very dark ball python. So I think to go with your all black stuff down the road, you're going to see Suma do a lot more of that than black pastel and cinnamon. Suma is going to be the one that's going to, to, to be the key. Uh, the problem with Suma is it does have a red stripe. It actually looks bitchin'. has this really cool stripe, has an iridescence to it, so it's not like a solid black. But when you take your Suma and you mix in another darkening agent like black pastel or cine, then I think you're going to get to a truly, barely black, black snake. That'll be really awesome with an iridescence to it. Add that in with pied. There you go. You have a panda pied that's stable. So, uh, and you can see him. Jake here already did him. He already did Suma pies. This is like the second video in a row I've name dropped that dude. So obviously, and we'll probably will drop Jake here's name a lot because you know, now I'm getting kind of off track, but eh, it's okay. As you come up in this hobby, uh, there are people you find and people you kind of start to look up to. And, and I don't want to say, say emulate all the time, but you see some of the things they do. And it kind of motivates you for what you do. And there are people, there are, there are three people that I'll say really did that for me. Um, you know, and everybody's going to say, oh, well, it's, it's you know, it's got to be BHB and Brian Barczyk. And, well, Barczyk did, I mean, inspire us a lot when it comes to videos and things like that. As far as my breeding plans, I really wouldn't say that Brian's been a huge inspiration on that front. Not because he didn't do awesome stuff, but because when I looked at that and I first started thinking about making this a business, I thought, man, I never want to be that big. I never want to be so big that I manage people and not animals. It's not my dream. And so my three inspirations were all people who were a little bit, a little bit smaller, uh, you know, than that and still were successful. And that would be you know, JKR is one of them. And the reason is you'll hear him talk about it. He's the largest small breeder there is. And he keeps his collection to a certain manageable size where he's still very, very hands-on with it. And so that was an inspiration because that's kind of what we want to achieve. You know, John Dog was an inspiration because he was one of the first guys that spent time with me on a phone for a long time when I was asking, you know, new, new guy questions and things and didn't make me feel like an idiot and helped me out. And was so focused on the Exanthic, which is my favorite gene, that... I learned a lot and got a lot of inspiration there. And then the third one would, would actually be here local, and that is, you know, you look at tall grass reptiles, and you've heard me name drop them a lot, which is where our Suma, I know our Suma didn't come from that, I'm sorry. <laughs> our Suma came from Travis Whistler. It's where our Pastel Freeway came from. It's where, you know, our uh, Tofino came from. It's where my original Xanthic Spider came from. A lot of my breeding stock came from there. And the reason is, is because they're right here. They're right in our back door. And the guy that started that actually started it in Manhattan, Kansas. So he started in the same place we were from when he got the idea to do this. He ended up in Kansas City area, you know. But that, that local connection and saying, damn, right here is a person in my backyard that before I got on the scene was doing what I want to do and able to do it successfully in proof of concept. And they're right there and I can pull, pick their brain. I can pull knowledge from them. I have a great animal selection. So that's been kind of an inspiration so I would say those are the three that really inspired us to do what we're doing uh, as far as on our breeding plans go. Obviously doing the YouTube thing, you know, we, we picked BHB a lot on that. And Brian, because, well, he was the one doing that. And then everybody, you know, jumped on. But uh, there you are. So, Kurt, any questions? No. Nope. That's because he asked a question and I turned it into like a seven-minute answer. And he's sitting there going, my arm's tired. Would you shut the hell up? All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you all next week.